Hey, what's up, everybody? Jeremy here in the kitchen. A very good reason for that that I will get to in a moment. Don't forget, not long ago, we launched this, the Verizon Visa card. It is a card exclusively designed for Verizon that rewards cardholders on everyday purchases. 4% on gas and grocery store purchases, including delivery. 3% on dining purchases, including takeout. Hey, I use that all the time. 2% on Verizon purchases and 1% on everything else. Cardholders earn what are called Verizon dollars. There are rewards that they can redeem for the best things, Verizon, accessories, new devices, you name it. Uh, there are no limits to how much cardholders can earn. Hey, today is a big day for me because it is National Potato Day. I love a potato. You can mash it, you can smash it, you can bake it, or you can put it in a French fry. I love all of those things. And a very special guest here with us, uh, Chef David Burke, uh, one of the best known and most respected chefs in the modern American cuisine, hailing right here from the Garden State. Uh, the chef is going to tell us all about some great recipes and a little bit more about how we can take advantage of the Verizon Visa card. Hey, remember, if you want to recreate these recipes that the chef is talking about today, the Verizon Visa card is going to help you out with that. want to get it over to the chef now. Chef, how are you doing? Take it away, my friend. I'm doing great, Jeremy. Nice to see you. Hi, everybody. I'm Chef David Burke. And on behalf of Verizon Visa, I'm excited to cook with you today on National Potato Day. We're using some common kitchen ingredients to make one of my favorite recipes. And it's a side dish, and it's called Hipster Fries. For all of you to enjoy, Hipster Fries, that's right. Uh, Verizon Visa cardholders can earn 4% in Verizon dollars when they purchase these recipe ingredients from the grocery store. So let's get started. Potatoes are the first thing we need. Um, so I have a recipe here. I'm going to follow the recipe because oftentimes I don't. And uh, I usually turns out <laughs> pretty good, but sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it doesn't. So to teach, I'm going to follow a recipe. And one of the hipster fries we're going to make is we're going to make a ketchup out of plums. Now, it sounds weird, right? Tom ketchup's made out of tomatoes. They used to be made with plums. And they were made with other fruits as well, but it was called ketchup, C-A-T-S-U-P. So we're gonna make a plum ketchup. Um, today, instead of tomatoes, we're using plums. So I have, I'm gonna start out by getting the sauce on the fire. And that's a terminology in the kitchen, getting a sauce on the fire, meaning we're gonna start cooking. So we're gonna put in some onions in the pan. I didn't put any oil. You could put a little oil if you wanted, but we're really gonna boil it all together onions and plums just to get going and I'm, I'm following a recipe so I got about a half a pound of plums half of an onion or, and I'm gonna put them in here together and plums actually are fabulous to cook with you know like plum well, we all know plum sauce in Chinese food for Peking duck and, and uh, all that so plum ginger little piece of ginger we're gonna puree this sauce so when you puree a sauce you try to cut things smaller that way it's the machine is less work to do so, especially ginger that's fibrous. I happen to like ginger a lot, and if you do, don't be afraid to use plenty of it, because a plum ketchup, and because they're hipster fries, you get to do what you want, because hipsters kind of do what they want anyway. So here you go. I've got ginger and plums and onions here, kind of, just kind of softening up a little bit. A little bit of garlic. I think the recipe calls for two cloves, so, because I'm doing about a half a recipe, I, I'm gonna give them one and a half. Garlics goes in, and uh, cinnamon's an ingredient that goes in as well. And the cinnamon is just a small amount. So there's the uh, plums, and then we need to add some brown sugar, or white sugar, or sugar in a raw half a cup. So, this, so basically, most condiment sauces whether it's ketchup, barbecue sauce, hoisin sauce, or sweet and sour. They aid in digestion, and you eat them with usually fatty foods like French fries, pork chops, applesauce is another one. Apples, apples has that sugar and vinegar. So all those sauces are condiment sauces. They all have one thing in common. They're sweet and sour with different other savory notes, heat notes, etc. So, And that's basically to aid in the digestion of what you're eating. Even, they're usually putting it on fatty foods. So I got some vinegar, and the vinegar is half a cup. So I add a little extra. So if you add a little extra, you gotta add a little extra sugar to balance it out. So that's that. 
Salt and pepper, of course, if you want a little spicy, and a little bit of red pepper flakes, but I have a little cayenne, so I'm gonna use very little. Okay, that's our, then that's our ketchup base. I'm gonna add a couple more plums because I had a little liquid. And the plums, plums are excellent this time of year. And they're underused, you know, you don't see a lot of plum desserts. And, uh, you know, you can pickle them, make ketchup. I mean, this type, this time of uh, year when you get the peaches, and the tomatoes and the peppers. So I'm making some jams and chutneys and condiments. You know, just remember one thing, add sugar and vinegar and anything else you like. Now we're gonna let that boil down. You'll see the color is gonna bleed out of the skin. And then we'll move to the potatoes. Started making the, the plum ketchup. So I pureed it after it got soft. So that's what we got cooking here. So this, will turn into that. Meantime, I got two oils. This oil is going to be low. We're going to blanch in here, and then this one will be higher. To, so you go low heat to kind of fry, boil your french fries initially, and then you cool them off or you just take them out. Then you put them in a high fat when you're ready to serve them. These are big, uh, you know, regular Idaho potatoes. They're not too big, but so we're going to cut these for french fries. You know, I'm pretty good with a knife, but in general, be careful. Cut it like this, not too thick. And we're gonna leave it just like that. If you got a little brown piece, piece cut it out. A little oxidation there. And then here you go again. You'd be surprised how many fries you get out of a potato, especially large ones. So now I'm gonna still use the skins. They'll be a little crispier than the other sides, but now the key to potato, sometimes we rinse them off. Sometimes you don't, but we're gonna put them all here. And this is at least one order, maybe two orders, because the fries, when you make them homemade, are hearty. They're not blown out, they're not hollow. So I'm gonna give this a quick rinse. See the milkiness of the water? Some of the starch coming right out of the potato. And that's good. Sometimes they usually, in, in when we make fries, we soak them overnight. So now I got the fries. So you can see, not too hot, not bu not bubbling, bubbling, bubbling. So, so it's a, it's a lower heat. These are all gonna go in, and they're gonna kind of stew. They're not gonna fry like we know frying right now. They're kind of boiling in oil on low heat. So what we're trying to do here now is cook the center of the fry, not worry about getting it crisp and brown. Right? We're gonna wind up with this. So these have been cooked already, so you see they're cold, but they're cooked. They're cooked, but they're not crispy. These will be ready to go in phase two. So that after we blanch these, you'll get this. And I had these in a the cooler overnight because you want to get it ahead of time. So what we do in a restaurant, we'd have these from the morning, and at night we take these and put them in the hot fryer, which is 375, 350. You blanch at about 250, 300. So we're gonna we're blanching now, nice and low. Basically, if you blanch it, you cook the center of the potato and it doesn't turn black, it doesn't oxidize. So now you can store it on, yeah, without uh, soaking them in water. So here's the plum sauce that is almost finished. Here's the plum sauce that is just boiling now, softening up, stewing, melding flavors. One I did this morning, I took it off a little early, it was still a little too runny. So now I'm reducing it. When that cools, that'll be the consistency of tomato ketchup. Now, if you take your uh, potatoes, if you cut them the night before, soak them in water and put them in the fridge, take them out earlier in the day so they're not so cold. Otherwise, when you put them in this oil, the oil temperature goes down to, to nothing. It just takes longer, especially when you're trying to crisp them up. Just keep blanching this, and then what we'll do is when this is just about cooked, I'll take a couple of pieces and put it in here, show you how it's done. But in the meantime, I'll use the ones I made this morning because that's the way you should do it. But you can do it this way too. So here's uh, this sauce. So this is the plum finished. That's halfway through and this is for finished plum ketchup. 
So now back to the fries. They're blanching, right? You see? Now I could, they're pretty much cooked. Now if I put them in the hot oil, which I'm gonna, you can see this oil, by the, you can see by the bubble motion, this oil is hotter. So you blanch them once. You see this is at 300 blanching temp. I'm gonna move that off and this is a little higher at 375. Lots of bubbles, high heat, be careful, you know? But if you do it correctly, and you don't, when you put them in frozen at your house and it has all that water attached to the crystals, then you get all that, that explosive oil and it rises up because the temperature change. So keep in mind, try to keep the fries at a certain temperature. This will be done soon. You can see how thick it is, right? Let's do a chunky ketchup. See, I'm very happy with that. Now this, French fries. Gonna get them nice and brown and crisp, super crispy. I got a paper towel ready to drain on. Okay, they're looking pretty good to me. You can tell they're hand cut. Little bits, little stubby fries and there's long fries and there's jagged edges and there's skin and there's no skin and they're all crunchy. Okay, so now another important thing. Make sure you shut off the oil when, before you start eating your fries. So first thing you do when you see a french fry as a professional cook is you put salt on it. And if you don't do that, it means you don't know how to cook. That's, that's, what, that's what I say. Anyway, french fries here, right? Drained off on the oil again. Now I'm gonna put them here in the little bowl. You can hear them, hear how crispy they are? Next move, peanuts. Throw some peanuts in there. All right, and we put some salt, we're gonna add a little more salt, a little pepper, something that is not in the recipe, but I'm gonna add a little bit of scallions, because I'm hip, and these are hipster. And grapes, grapes are in the recipe. The grapes you wanna add last, because they they're a little wet, so that you don't want them to sog, so you can put them on the top, or in this case, we just put a few of them in. And then you can use your hands in the restaurant or gloves, but you know, we're just gonna kind of toss it up. And I'm gonna put it in here, these fries. And some more peanuts, a couple more grapes. I'm gonna use the hot sauce I just made because I think it looks nicer. I'll show you what that is here. That's one ketchup. Here's another ketchup, still warm, but a different one is pureed and one isn't. Hipster fries, peanut butter and jelly style. And if I don't mind if I do, Professional chef approved. I definitely think hipster approved and child approved because of the name alone. So, hope you learned something. I think they're sexy and exciting. And you know what, it's something different. It, don't let the name fool you, peanut butter and jelly fries. It's very adult, very sophisticated, and very creative and delicious. Let's get to the next one. These are now gonna be Spaniard Freighter fries you see here. Very delicious, you know, because they're hip in Spain. All right, so the Spanish hipster fries, chorizo sausage, green olives, piquillo peppers, chopped chives. I got some cilantro leaves. I'm just going to pick or scissor them and uh, salt pepper. And I got manchego cheese here. I'm, uh, I have a softer farmer's cheese I'm going to use. And this is chili oil. This is made with paprika and cooking chilies and red pepper flakes now with a little bit of tomato, straining it out. And we have, this is a pantry item called chili oil, which we use in our restaurant. So we're gonna use the chili oil somewhat too. First thing you do after your french fries, make sure you shut the oil off. 
I'm telling you, I know. Shut the oil off. Fries, salt, and generous salt, pepper. Bowl, we're making Spaniard hipster fries. So, these are gonna go in here. Again, we're gonna, you're gonna see uh, very little oil. Look at that, because they're fresh. We're gonna add olives, all of you. We're gonna add piquillo peppers, uh, chorizo. Chorizo, you could have heated if you like, but we're gonna just keep it simple. And then I got some chives. And like I said, the cilantro we're gonna use in leaf form. Here's the cubes of cheese. Spread that out a little bit. And then I'm gonna toss this up a little bit. Smells good. The olives wake up and the chorizo. We're gonna pour this in. Oh, that's delicious, look at that. I'm gonna add that curd, which is the middle of the cheese, right on top. Almost like yogurt, but that's from the center of the cheese. A little cilantro. So I'm just gonna just drizzle a little bit of that chili oil on there. Why not? And what I would serve with this sauce, that's beautiful, I'm very happy. My other recommendation with that is a nice wedge of lime, couple wedges of lime to share with that, and a beer. Now we've got one more fry to go. We have bacon here. This is called lardons. This is cut bacon with some bacon fat, so save the fat. Got a little maple, a little black pepper on it. Shishito peppers. Sometimes they're hot, sometimes they're not. Chives, a little cilantro, Parmesan cheese. I'm gonna put a little cayenne pepper. And uh, sometimes, if you don't want bacon, we use beef jerky or chicken. And this was our original hipster fry. And also the shishitos are chopped for this recipe, just for simplicity at home. But if you know how to cook them whole and blister them, fantastic. You can also air fry potatoes. There's a lot of good equipment out there, air fryers, so you don't have to fry. You can air fry the potatoes. You can bake them in the oven. And when you do that, you should air fry whole shishitos and mix them in with the uh, fries and you can eat them whole like you would blister chishito. Salt your fries. Pepper your fries. And shake them off. I'm gonna put them back in my little french fry salad bowl, I guess. I guess if you put enough greens in there, you can call it a french fry salad. First thing in, bacon. Bacon and all its fat. Now we just got done saving you all that oil here. We're gonna put it back. Right? Shishito peppers, chives, cilantro, parmesan, we're all in. We're all in. All, right. all in. And a little bit of cayenne pepper to taste if you like it. Shishitos will add a little bit of heat, but sometimes, you know, every one in every ten they say, right? And Extra virgin olive oil. I like to add this because of the fruitiness, not be, not to make them greasy, and it's a good oil. And it's great with the uh, Parmesan, okay? And the bacon. This is the All-American Hipster Fry. We gave you a Spaniard Hipster Fry and we gave you a peanut butter and jelly version of Hipster Fries. Enjoyed working with you today. I hope you learned something, thank you. And uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you, Chef, that looks great. I can't wait to try my own Hipster Fries right here in my kitchen. Hey, if you want the recipe or wanna learn how to apply for the Verizon Visa card, all of the details for you on the web. My thanks again to Chef Burke.
And until next time, you're up to speed.